Right, welcome, this is question number um, six for APAAS um, Physics Unit 1 past paper, uh, June 2013. Episode. Now, what I've done is I've drawn the circuit you given in your uh, exam paper, and the first thing I want to focus on is this little dashed thing around uh, what we see is a battery that has something uh, 12 volts on it, um, and a little small resistor that is 1.5 ohms. Now, that little small resistor, because it's inside this little dotted line, what that essentially says is uh, the resistor inside is what we call the internal resistor. So basically, this is the internal resistor to the battery. Now, this 12 volts is key to read the question. This 12 volts is, is um, the EMF of the battery, the electric motive force. So that's the electrical energy per unit charge, essentially. Um, no, wait. That's wrong. Sorry, completely ignore. That's the electric field strength. Completely ignore me, please. Um, basically, what I'm trying to get across is it's not the potential difference, even though it is measured in volts, as there is, um, well, I'll go on to it. So, uh, the equation for the electromotive force is E equals I, I R, I big R plus I little r. Now, little r is the internal resistance. Now, if there's no internal resistance, then this I times little r is obviously going to be zero, so therefore the electric motive force is equal to IR, and as we know, V equals IR, IR, so therefore the electric motive force equals a potential difference when there is no internal resistance. But because there is internal resistance, we don't know what it is, uh, well we do, it's 1.5 ohm electric, um, therefore the electric motive force is not the potential, di is not the potential difference, because the electric motive force equals the potential difference plus uh, the potential difference over the uh, internal resistor in the battery. Okay, so hopefully I've clarified um, that a little bit. The first question, um, obviously we've got a coin here, 4.2 on, so. Um, so this question kind of just gets you to understand your um, circuit theory. So um, the, really what you need to understand is obviously understand a bit about that e EMF stuff, um, but the fact that the current is split up um, in terms of it's a different current over the two ohm resistor over the single resistor and that the potential difference across parallel resistors is the same so they're the two key bits of information you need to be able to understand uh, to answer this question because obviously uh, we possibly well definitely will have to use that theory at some stage um, okay so the first question says uh, show that the potential difference across the internal resistance is 6.3 volts. Now, the internal resistance, we don't need to worry about the battery. Now, as I said, it's not 12 volts because that's the EMF. Uh, so that's what the lazy student would do in the exam, just see how 12 volt that must be. It's got volt in it, so it must be the same thing. Well, it's not. Can we explain that? So, um, okay. So, use V equals IR. And we know the current at that point, because it's not being shared with anything else on that, that's parallel to that one. This down here, but it's a different part of the circuit. So all the current, all the 4.2 amps must be flowing through the internal resistor of the battery, it's obvious. So therefore we know the current is 4.2 amps. So you write I is equal to 4.2 amps, or the current is equal to 4.2 amps. Um, the resistance of the battery, we call this little r, we know that to be 1.5 ohms, but that's the only resistance inside. And we need to know the potential, show that the potential difference is 6.3 volts. So if you do it correctly, you should get 6.3. Um, so the potential difference is 4.2 amps, times 1.5 ohms and you should get an answer of um, 6.3 volts. Okay, now a cheap way of doing this, if you didn't know um, what, if you, I mean obviously the potential difference you've got to use B equals IR. Now if you didn't know what to use for either the current or the, or the resistance, you didn't know to put as a resistance, whether to put all of it or just um, the 1.5 ohms, which I must stress is what you do. You could work backwards, the exam's not going to know that somebody's crossing it out. Um, so you, if you get stuck, I mean, in one of these show that question, it's a lot easier than if it didn't tell you the answer, then you can always work backwards, but you'll have to show um, going the other way, okay? So the examiner's never going to know you went backwards if you got the right answer, okay? So that's a cheap way of doing it if you couldn't understand that, but that's a very easy show that question, so I don't think you would have needed to do that. Okay, so that's part uh, part one, A part one. Uh, a part two 
says uh, calculate the potential difference across the two ohm resistor. Okay. Um, well, obviously we know um, the resistance of this, which is um, two ohms. So there's a key thing to start by writing down what we know. Okay. So we know the resistance is two ohms because it's a two ohm resistor. Okay. So what do we do with the potential difference? Well. We know the potential difference is going to be the same across each um, resistor, because that's what they are, they are just two resistors. And we know the potential difference on um, over this, that's why we've been asked to work it out. So we know, uh, so let's work out total total potential difference here. Um, well the total potential difference is 12 volts. Now I know I said that's the EMF and the EMF is not the potential difference, but if you relate this to the, um, because we're not told the total potential difference in the circuit, so we know E equals um, I big R times plus R, I little r, okay, now this, let's sub in what we know in this equation, okay, so we know the EMF is 12 volts, okay, uh, we know the current is 4.2 amps, so we can sub that in at all points, that is times the big resistance, now what I'm going to do is just assume that these two are combined for one resistor because that's what you do when they're parallel but I'll explain why I'm going through this in a minute and we know I little r is 6.3 volts so that's just plus 6.3 volts okay all right so 12 volts is equal to 4.2 times the combined resistance of these two and I'm doing this because what we want to work out is what this actually means we want to work out what V because V equals I r then we can replace this 4.2 times R with V because that's the potential difference, okay? Because V equals I R, we just sub that in the equation. So therefore, the potential difference over the both of them is equal to 12 take 6.3 volts. So therefore, the potential difference, if you work it out, obviously 6 plus 6 is 12, so therefore, obviously, uh, the potential difference is 5.7 volts. But that doesn't tell us everything. Now, we know the potential difference across them is the same. If they were in series, then we'd add the potential difference uh, together. But because they're in parallel, we have the same potential difference. I just clarify them as one resistor with a potential difference, really, even though they're two separate ones, really. OK, so we know they both have a potential difference of 5.7 volts. So you can draw any diagram 5.7 volts next to each resistor because, as we said, parallel resistors have the same voltage. That's why we need to understand that. OK, so now we understand that. Okay, hopefully you can see how, why we did this, because there's no other way that we can use, because all, the only information that we would have is the resistances 2 ohms. Now, you couldn't use the current as 4.2 amps, because we said before the current is shared um, in parallel circuit, because obviously it can't just go through one resistor, it's got to go through both, because it's connected in a circuit. So, uh, basically, we can't assume there's 4.2 amps. There won't be, and we can't assume that. So, there's nothing else that we can do. The only... Because what we want to work out is the, um, oh, why were we trying to work out? Uh, potential difference. We want to work out the potential difference across the two ohm resistor. Oh, so we've done it straight away. And we don't, so, okay, yeah. So we want to know the potential difference across this, the two ohm resistor. Now, we can't use a current, as I said, because that's shared. Now, we know V equals I R. So the only other component we can use is potential difference. So there's got to be a way of going straight to the potential difference. And that just requires a bit of theory, as I've kind of explained here. OK, so hopefully you've got that. All right, so by the way, that, that potential difference is for both of them. So I'm just going to rub this out just to give myself a bit more room. And uh, I might go ahead and be crazy this time. I'm actually use a proper rubber. Uh, OK, so hopefully that's explained why there's a potential difference of 5.7 volts. Uh, across each one. Alright, so I'm going to leave that 6.3 volts because, well actually no, I'll add that in. So we've got 6.3 volts as the potential difference across uh, the internal resistance. Okay, so that's part A part 1 and A part 2. Sorry, that just annoys me if it isn't too neat. Yes. Um, okay, so that's what we've got on the circuit. So now after doing all that, you know, the total electromotive force is the uh, 6.3 at the R, internal resistance. So 6.3, the potential difference, is taken up by the internal resistance. Uh, 5.7 is taken up by both 
the two ohm and the other resistor that we call R. Funny enough, they've thought about that one, haven't they? Uh, okay, so what we no now need to do. Um, oh, by the way, that was only worth one mark, so it's not going to involve that last question we did to find out the um, five point ten volts. It's only worth one mark, so it's not going to be several calculations. And um, as you can see, I got to it quicker than I expected to. So if I'd have looked at that, it was a one mark. I might have uh, seen that straight away. But obviously that's right, Billy. Uh, next, we need to calculate the current in the two ohm resistor. Now this is again. All, most of these questions seem to be using B equals I-O, which is the simplest equation that you can do. So, as I said, most of this question is just theory-based. It's very easy in terms of the maths and the physics behind it. So we want to work out the volt, the uh, resistance... current in the 2 ohm um, resistor. Okay, so all we're focusing on is this single resistor, and that's obviously going to lead somehow to the next resistor, probably. So, again, using B equals I-R. Noting down what you know, so you know uh, we've got a resistance equal to 2 ohms and a potential difference equal to 5.7 volts and we want to work out the current. I probably should have emphasised this a bit more. In physics you always write down what you know. So then you can use what you know and see if it fits any equations. And obviously it fits V equals IR, that's given. Probably shouldn't have told you that and worked it through, but anyway. So we know V equals IR. We want I, so we rearrange this equation to get I. So it's just a case of I on both sides by R, so obviously therefore I equals uh, V over R. So subbing what we know, so I is equal to uh, 5.7 volts over 2 ohms. So therefore you get a current, remember this is amps, this is 5.7 over 2. That is equal to 2.85 amps. Okay. So that was worth uh, one mark. And now we need to determine the current in R. Now, we can't use V equals IR because we don't know the resistance of R. All we've got is the potential difference. 5.7 volts. We don't know anything else about R. So let's take into account what we do know about the whole circuit. Okay. We know there's a total current in the circuit of 4.2 amps. And we know by calculating our last part of the question, 2.5 of them. So basically, the current comes down here and then is split in over the 2 ohm resistor and the resistor R. Now, it doesn't take much thinking to work out. If you have a higher resistance, then obviously you have a lower current because it's trying to stop it more. But that's not going to help us in this question. So, I mean, generally, sorry, that's the kind of thing that would apply if you were... They might ask which has got the higher current. Now, obviously, we can work that out, but... Sorry, shut up. Okay, so we have 2.5 of them, 85 of them amps. It's already taken up by the 2 ohm resistor. Okay, and it's shared. So... Therefore, the current going through the 2 ohm resistor and the current going through the resistor that we labelled R must equal 4.2 amps. So therefore, it's just a case of doing 4.2 amps, take away 2.5, 85 amps, sorry. And we sub that in the calculator. Sorry, I, I, you know, I'm obviously mathematical, but I didn't want to mess it up. Uh, you get a current which is equal to 1.15 amps. So obviously that's the current in our 1.15 amps. Okay. So what I do is keep updating your little circuit. Okay. So that's where we're up to so far. So that was question uh, 6a part uh, 4. Okay. 6a part 5. Calculate the resistance of R. Now going back to our friendly formula, V equals IR. We know the potential difference of 5.7 volts. We know the uh, current is 1. Point, so V equals 5.7 volts. Uh, the current equals 1.15 amps. And we want to know um, R. Okay, so a simple rearrangement of V equals IR. You might want to show the rearrangement, it's up to you. It's not going to take that much more time to show it. Uh, v R equals V over I. So if you do make a mistake, you can see where you come from. So it's V over I, so it's 5.7. Uh, volts over 1.15 amps that gives us our resistance okay. 
and that gets us a resistance of oh god, sorry do apologies uh, of, I'll try to open the pen now of uh, 4.96 ohms okay right, so that's the resistance in R and what we want to do next is calculate the total resistance of the circuit Sorry, I didn't think that was right. Um, I don't know. I typed in. I must have typed in my calculator wrong. I did the uh, right equation, but this 4.2 take 2.85. That's actually 1.35 um, amps. I obviously did 4 take 2.85. It's 4.2 take 2.85. That gives us 1.35 amps. So um, if we correct that, then we should get an answer for. Um, I'll say it was my calculator, not me. So it's 5.7 over 1.35. Okay, so it's 4.2 ohms. Okay. Alright, so hopefully that correction's made sense. As I said, it was exactly the same method that I followed before. The only difference is I've changed the current because, um, well, I've well, changed it. Uh, I typed the current in my calculator wrong, so the current through R is actually 1.35 amps as opposed to 1.15. Um, but as I said, the method stays exactly the same. Um, just wherever I put 1.15 amps, you just replace it 1.35. So I do apologise, uh, but as I said, the methods were right. That's why I kind of paused the video just before. Um, okay, so I asked to find the total resistance in the circuit. So what I'm going to do is just uh, do a quick rub off of this. 4.2 ohms. Okay. So, need to understand again how we add up resistance in a circuit. Do apologise. Right. So it's very easy. When when we're adding parallel revi uh, resistors, sorry, when we're adding resistance in series, we simply add the resistance of one resistor to the resistance of another. But doing parallel is a lot more difficult. And don't ask me why, I can't be bothered to explain. Because obviously I know. Parallel, we want to essentially replace this with one resistor that we can, because science is lazy, we just want to replace this with one resistor. Now, the formula for it is one over the resistance of this resistor we're trying to find. One over this resist, of the resistor. Now this is not one over the resistance of this resistor, it's one over the resistance of this ideal resistor that we want to replace the 2 ohm resistor and this resistor R with. So that's why it gets confusing. We could have called it R2 or something or whatever. It's 1 over R1, so that's 1 over the first resistor, plus 1 over the second resistor in parallel, which is called R2. So therefore, 1 over this re realistic resistor, 1 over this resistor we want to find out, is equal to 1 over the 2 ohm resistor, plus 1 over the 4.2 ohm resistor. And that's 4.2 recurring, by the way, but I just left is 4.2 but you might want to leave it as 4.2 recurring in your calculator so then you get an answer for this you get I don't know well I don't know and I'm trying to be explaining the question so it doesn't help really does it uh, so 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4.2 recurring and then you get an answer which is 0.736 or whatever but that's not the final answer because that is equal to 1 over R, remember? So you have to do 1 over 0.736. Okay, you get an answer for that. It's 1.3536 ohm resistor. So essentially, if we wanted to replace these two resistors with one resistor, we would replace it with a resistor which has a resistance equal to 1.36 ohms. Um, now, the rest of it is just a case of... We're, now, we're assuming this is one resistor because this we can't combine it to have... Uh, a resistance of 1.36 ohms and we just add it to the 1.5 ohm resistor and you would get a total answer um, therefore of two point eight five, 2.8 um, ohm that's the total resistance of the circuit Okay, so that's um, 5B. Let me just double check. Um, 
sorry, uh, this mark seems to my thing's gone a bit stupid. Um, yep, yeah, that's the total. Resistance. That's six I six uh, A part six. Okay. So the next part is uh, gives us a bit of a well, I don't know what it gives us really. Um, gives us a kind of table, and we're asked to sort of work out. It, well, the essential thing it's trying to ask in this question is: is it efficient or not? Is the power dissipated equal to the power? So the power given by the uh, cell is it equal to the power that is produced by the resistors and um, the circuit? First same thing. Though. Okay, so right, so just blow that off. Uh, keep in mind that the total resistance of the circuit is uh, two point eight ohm. Okay, so that's the equal to the total resistance in the circuit. I just I thought I'd have this up by now, but obviously not. Okay, so uh, the battery converts chemical energy into uh, electrical energy, then dissipated in the resistance, etc. And we're given this table to fill out. So uh, obviously we classify the internal uh, all the resistors and work out the energy dissipated in watts. Now, even if you didn't know what energy dissipated means, when you see the little sign where it has watts next to it, then obviously it's talking about power. So I'm just going to draw that table out for you. So we've got uh, the type of resistor and the power. Now obviously it says energy dissipated, but the same thing. And it's we've got the internal resistor, 1.5 ohms. Uh, we've got the 2 ohm resistor. And obviously it just says resistor R, but it just means the second resistor, which we know is uh, 4.2 ohm resistor, or 4.2 recurring. And for power, there's a couple of things you could do. You could P equals I squared R, or P equals IV. It's totally up to you what you use. Um, I don't know, actually. Um, I'm going to go with IV, because it's easier. Um, so, right in the little column, so P equals IV. So what, what we do is we just, uh, well, the 1.5 ohm resistor, because that's the internal resistor, we know the um, current is 4.2 ohms, and we times that by 1.5. I guess we've already done this is 6 point, oh wait, oh sorry, it's IV. Uh, we know the potential, yeah, 4.2 times 6.3 volts. I don't know what, I was getting P equals I, V equals I, but anyway, it's P equals IV, so uh, 4.2 times 6.3. Get an answer of uh, 26.46 uh, watts. Okay, uh, using the same equation, P equals IV. So, therefore, the 2 ohm resistor we said was a current of 2.85 amps. And we times that by the um, potential difference at the 2 ohm resistor, which we said was 5.7 volts. Okay, so 2.85 times 5.7 volts. Which is 16.245 watts. Now I'm being as accurate as I am on the calculator because obviously we're going to need to compare it to something in a minute. Okay, so um, P equals IV, the last one. So the power equals the current in the 4.2 ohm resistor, which we said is 1.35 amps times the potential difference, which we know is um, 5.7 volts also. Okay, so when you sub down your calculator, 1.35 times 5.7, you get 7.695 watts. Okay, and that is what the question just asks. It all, all it asks is to just put it into um, the table. So we've sort of almost drawn out the table as you can imagine it's something like that. To apologise. Okay, so you get the idea of the table. Now, the last part of the question says, Hence, show um, the energy is conserved in the circuit. So I'm moving about on my chair and really uh, whiteboard, so because I'm lazy. So to show that the energy in the circuit is uh, is um, conserved, 
But what we need to do is we need to, okay, this is the total energy, so these are the individual resistors, and the power that is generated in all of them must be coming from somewhere. So, for the energy, so the first thing, point I would state, um, probably should get off this, is that for energy to be conserved, the energy provided by the battery must be equal to the energy which is dissipated in the resistors uh, uh, and the other things that are in the circuit. Because if, if it isn't equal, then conservation energy says we can't uh, lose or create energy, so it must be going to another form. Hence, energy is not being conserved. Okay, so, well, it's kind of it, but it's not in the circuit. Okay, and that's kind of what it's asking. So, um, we need to work out. So, add all of these together. So, you add, uh, so that's the total power um, dissipated in the circuit. So, you say, okay, well, the total power uh, dissipated in the circuit, so through the resistors, essentially. Is equal to the 26.46 watts plus the 16.245 uh, watts plus the 7.695 watts. Okay, you total all that up, so just sum it, just in case you sum it in your calculator 26.46 uh, plus 16.245 uh, plus 6, 7.695. Okay, get an answer of uh, 50. Point for watts. Right, so that's the power that is dissipated in the circuit. Now I need to work out what is the power, because that's the power being released. The power being put in must be exactly the same if we are correct. So, well, I'd say it is, but you know. Okay, so the power dissipated by the battery, so the power given by the battery into the circuit. Now, as I said, we could use P equals IV or P equals I squared R. Okay, so if we were to use IV, um, Because even though I said EMF is not, um, is, is not the potential difference, because we're considering uh, the internal resistance as well, and that's what we considered in the actual table, because that is part of the circuit at the end of the day, then that is something we also need to consider in the actual power being supplied by the battery. So P equals IV. So we can use the potential difference as being the EMF, which is weird because it kind of goes against what I said, but we included it in this table uh, and that's what's being supplied so therefore we need to include it the power being supplied by the battery so p equals uh, the current which is 4.2 amps times 12 volts and then we get 50.4 watts now as the power being dissipated in the circuit and the power being generated by the battery is both 54.50.4 watts then we can say therefore the energy is um because energy is dissipated in power go hand in hand so therefore, they, as they are the same thing, uh, there, is en there is no loss of energy, hence energy is conserved in the system. Okay, so that's question six. That's all the marks there that you need to get. All right, um, if you want me to, as I said, you can just look on the marks given and see where we've got the individual marks from, but that's covered everything. Okay, so most of that question was just theory. There was a last little bit of actual having to work it, stuff out, but so most of it is just theory and understanding um, the, the main bit well, at the beginning, uh, kind of, if you got it, you got the question right. If you didn't, you kind of struggled with this one bit. Um, is that current is shared across parallel plates? Uh, oh, I said parallel plates, that's A2 stuff, right? They have plate stuff, but anyway. Um, is shared across a parallel circuit, but in a series circuit, it is the same all the way around. Okay? Right. Um, so hopefully that's kind of explained it to you in a way you understand. If you want me to do it again, please do let me know. Uh, um, I tried to keep it quite short and snappy, but I did have to give a bit, I do like to give a bit of background on these things. So anyway, uh, I mean, there's always a mark scheme. If you just want to quickly have a look, there's always a mark scheme um, online, so I just give a bit of background. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.